very few cattle in the United States bear any resemblance to the famous longhorns of the years gone by. These old timers have been pushed off the ranges by the English breeds which are popularly bred today. Longhorns owe their origin to Spanish cattle. Christopher Columbus probably brought the first cattle to the New World on his second voyage in 1493. In 1519, Cortez brought other Spanish cattle to Mexico. Later in the 16th century, more importations were introduced to North America by the Spaniards. These cattle multiplied rapidly under the favorable feed and climatic conditions. Longhorns today are heirlooms of the cattle industry. Their most useful purpose is to serve as sideshow attractions at rodeos. American cattle producers were awakened to a new era when the first Aberdeen Angus arrived in this country from Scotland in 1873. The initial importation consisted of four bulls which were crossed on longhorn cows. The Angus crossbreds on the Kansas City market attracted so much attention among cattle feeders, they brought additional importations. Crossbreeding continues to play an important role in the commercial production of the blacks. Angus sires are improving the beef-making qualities of the nation's cow herds. On this Louisiana plantation, the owner has selected Mr. Black to head his cow herd. The calves from this cross are usually black-bodied and are blockier and beefier, too. Mr. Black sires hardy, fast-growing calves, which will do well in the feedlot. More good Angus bulls are needed to improve and upgrade such commercial herds as this one. Crossing an Angus bull on this Florida herd will bring increased profits to the owner. These calves are strong evidence of Mr. Black's prepotency regardless of the color and conformation of the mother cows. They will bring a better price too. Farmers running cattle as a phase of their diversified operations find Angus bulls unsurpassed for crossing. One reason is that they have been hornless for centuries. 95% of the offspring are polled when Angus sires are crossed on other English horned breeds. There's no loss in weight due to dehorning, no bleeding, and no screw worm infestation of horn wounds with the blacks. A good management practice of range cattlemen in widespread sections of this country is the mating of good Angus bulls with yearling replacement heifers of other breeds. The smaller pole-shaped heads of the Angus crossbreds and smaller bone structure tend to reduce calving losses. Often commercial cattlemen gain an extra calf crop by breeding yearling heifers when they have sufficient feed to keep these heifers growing. The calves of the Angus Cross are unexcelled in hybrid vigor, reach heavy weaning weights, and are good doers in the feedlot. Some dealers in livestock have sought to buy the good Angus crossbreds below the market price paid for other straight-bred beef cattle of similar quality. But most experienced cattle feeders agree that they will pay a premium for the crossbreds because of their inherited Angus fleshing qualities, hybrid vigor, and ability to do well in the feedlot. The path of Angus expansion has been paved not only by far-sighted cattlemen, but also by the blacks themselves. People who have handled Angus crossbred such as these, along with their other cattle, have become sold on the valuable characteristics transmitted from the blacks. The need for more good Angus bulls to upgrade native herds is evident in many parts of the country. This southern herd shows its mixed ancestry. It's hard to estimate how much improvement could be made profit-wise if good registered Angus bulls headed this herd for a few generations. Good cattle eat no more than poor cattle. The use of good bulls is the most economical way to build up quality. Making herd replacements from the best crossbred heifers is one way to breed your herd black. 
On this Tennessee farm, crossbred Angus heifers mated to registered Angus bulls raise calves which are three quarters Angus blood. Here, a Kansas rancher practices fly control on a set of excellent black heifers. They are his herd replacements. His cow herd was originally mixed in color and conformation. For many years, his herd has been headed by good Angus bulls. It not only produces high quality feeder steers, but also heifers which are in good demand for founding other commercial herds. Good Angus bulls point the shortest route to high quality beef cattle production. The purchase of a registered beef bull means only that the animal is from purebred parents. If the herd is to be improved, herd sires need to be individually better than the average of the females as well as registered. The solid color of the blacks seems to make them resistant to cancer eye a range ailment that is most prevalent where cattle are subjected to bright sunlight. This solid color also makes for uniformity in appearance. There's another important advantage of the dark pigment in the skin of the blacks. In some northern range areas, late spring snows can upset the smoothest running cow and calf operation by reflecting the bright rays of the sun on the light-skinned udders of some breeds. Sunburning of the udders and teats means that the cows will probably kick their calves away at nursing time. This creates quite a job for the cow hand who has to rope each cow and relieve her sunburned udder of its milk load. That's the reason the Wyoming rancher owning this herd is turning it black through the use of Angus bulls. He found the blacks could take more hardships and were better rustlers. The calves weighed from 30 to 50 pounds more at weaning time. This herd, owned by a New Mexico rancher, is wintering at an elevation of 8,500 feet in the northern part of the state. The owner finds that an alert, aggressive cow will take better care of her calf and give it more protection on the range than a sluggish, unattentive beef cow. Protecting calves from dogs and predatory animals is not an important problem in many farm areas, but it does become important in the range country. Blacks are outstanding in their ability to withstand variable climatic conditions, extremely cold weather as well as heat and drought. Cattlemen who have never compared the rustling ability of the various breeds are amazed at the results when they run Angus alongside the others. They report their blacks are superior foragers, range farther from water, higher in rugged and rocky terrain, and are better able to withstand extremes in climate. Because the open ranges were already populated by the other breeds of beef cattle when the first Angus arrived in the United States, heaviest concentrations of the breed were maintained in the Midwest. Not until recent years have the blacks been allowed on the national grazing lands. This has led to the false belief among the inexperienced that the blacks are less adaptable. Nothing is farther from the truth as range cattlemen know so well today. The blacks from the rough lands of Scotland have ably transmitted their hardiness and rustling ability to their American counterparts. Branding and castrating are time-consuming operations on many ranches. On this Nebraska ranch in the famous Sand Hills region, a crew of men is busy doing the spring chores. Since dehorning is eliminated by these cattlemen handling Angus, countless hours are saved. This factor alone saves work and cuts the overhead in the production of beef cattle. In eight years of experimental work by a leading agricultural college, it was found that Angus calves weighed less at birth than another breed, but had far outgained the other calves at weaning time. Steer calves from Angus cows weighed 66 pounds more at weaning time, and heifer calves weighed 43 pounds more. Smaller birth weight is an influential factor in boosting calf crop percentages. Larger calf crops mean greater returns. 
Angus calves also show great vitality at birth. With a great increase in commercial Angus herds throughout the country, private sales of feeder calves are being bypassed in some areas in favor of public auction sales. Public feeder calf sales are sometimes sponsored by the State Extension Service or local Angus groups. Here, a Virginia committee inspects a calf crop for a feeder sale. Feeder calf sales now provide a marketplace for commercial Angus calves in many states. Virginia, Missouri, and countless other states annually sell thousands of top quality feeder calves through auctions. Management of some of these sales includes the sorting of calves into groups of similar size and quality. At this Iowa feeder calf sale, trucks move the cattle to the sale barn the morning of the auction. Annual sales like this not only provide a market for the producer's entire calf crop, but they also build a larger number of repeat customers who will come great distances for quality calves. These sales also receive widespread advertising and promotion to attract feeder buyers. Since the calves sold through these auctions are usually graded into uniform groups, they appeal to the buyers. The calves arrive at the sale barn early enough so buyers have plenty of time to see them. Good black feeder calves command a premium price everywhere cattle are fattened for prime beef. Profitable feeder cattle must make economical gains. Blacks do this. The packer knows that the blacks finish smoothly, producing a carcass with a maximum amount of meat on the choice cuts. The marbling of the fat evenly among the muscle fibers increases the quality and palatability of the beef. Another reason why Angus have won 95% of the carcass grand championships offered over the years at the International Livestock Exposition in Chicago. Progress of Mr. Black in the commercial cattle country is shown by a visit to one of the stockyards in the area. Here at Denver, during the National Western Stock Show, more good Angus bulls, more good black feeder cattle, and more good Angus crossbreds are evident each year. Angus bulls of correct type are deep bodied and thick, carrying their thickness well from end to end, short coupled and smooth shouldered with short properly set legs and plenty of bone. They have full deep quarters, a deep flank, and a short neck with an impressive crest if they are matured, and a good masculine head carried stylishly. They are smoothly covered with mellow flesh and have a thin pliable hide. Mr. Black is the best in modern beef type. The standard of excellence in beef cattle production is based not only on the show ring winnings of animals on the hoof and on the hook, but also on their performance on the farm or ranch and in the feedlot. The cardinal objective is to develop animals that economically produce a maximum of high quality beef. Mr. Black sets the high quality standard for all beef cattle. He's more than just a bull. He's a pace setter of progress, a builder of better beef, a promise of pounds, price, and profit.